Hello and welcome to the Chemistry Made Simple podcast. I'm your host Matthew Macario and this is the podcast where you get chemistry confident and we take you from point A to grade A. Hello and welcome back to the podcast or welcome along if this is your first time listening. Great to have you here. I hope that you're well. I hope that your studies are going well too. Today we're going to be talking about how do catalysts work and this is an episode in the series on kinetics so it might be helpful for you to go back and listen to the previous two episodes about collision theory and about the Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution. Once you've done that come back and listen to this. Okay you're back, great. So in order to talk about catalysts, we're going to first define what we mean by a catalyst. What actually is it? We'll talk a little bit about how they work in general. What are they doing? And we'll talk about a case study that illustrates how they function, how the catalytic process functions for gaseous reactants and products. So firstly, let's define what we mean by a catalyst. It's a phrase we hear very often in chemistry and beyond. But in chemistry, what do we mean by a catalyst? Well, a catalyst is a substance which will affect the rate of a chemical reaction and usually increase the rate of chemical reaction whilst not being used up itself, not being consumed. At the end of the reaction process, the same catalyst, the same quantity of catalyst will be present as was present at the beginning. It doesn't get used up. We said that a catalyst affects the rate of chemical reaction, usually increasing that rate, and it does so by lowering the activation energy required for a reaction to take place. Why does that make the reaction go quicker? Well, if you think back to the Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution curve, if a lower amount of activation energy is required for a reaction to proceed, then a greater proportion of the population of reactant molecules will have that much energy, will have enough energy, so that if they have an appropriate collision, a reaction can occur. So the presence of a catalyst is increasing the proportion of collisions that can be successful. How does it do that? How does a catalyst lower the activation energy? It's usually by offering an alternative pathway for the reaction to occur. So the transition state, the state between the reactant molecules and the product molecules will be slightly different. It will be a lower energy requirement to achieve that transition state between reactant and product. So in the example of gaseous reactants and products, we often use a metallic catalyst. It's very often a precious metal or a combination of precious metals. But it doesn't have to be. It's pretty much always going to be a transition metal, a metal from the D block of the periodic table. So nickel is frequently used, but also platinum, palladium, rhodium and gold are examples of metals that can be catalysts for reactions that happen in the gaseous state. How do they work? The reactant molecules adsorb to the metal surface. They form loose bonds, weak bonds with the metal surface. They're attracted to it. So that affects their other bonds so that reaction with each other is more possible. There is a lower activation energy to the reaction of the reactant molecules with each other on that metal surface. Once the reaction's taken place, the product gaseous molecules will release from that surface. They no longer form that bond and they will desorb from that surface. That frees the surface for more reactant molecules to be attracted to. A well-known example of this is a catalytic inverter in a motor vehicle. These contain a ceramic with a platinum and rhodium coating on the surface. And the ceramic is structured such that there's a honeycomb to offer a huge surface area for the catalytic reaction to occur on. There are a number of chemical reactions that this catalyst is catalyzing. So in the exhaust, there can be hydrocarbon, there can be carbon monoxide, and there can be nitrogen oxide compounds. All those can be bad for health or environment in various ways. A catalytic converter will catalyze the reaction of those into nitrogen, carbon dioxide and water. Now, carbon dioxide, of course, isn't a desirable product, but it's less undesirable than the carbon monoxide that would be otherwise in the exhaust if the catalyst wasn't there. Okay, so let's summarize. We've said today that a catalyst is a substance which offers an alternative pathway for a chemical reaction to occur and therefore increases the rate of reaction by lowering the activation energy. 
We've said that in the case of gaseous reactants and products, solid metal catalyst surface allows that process to happen when the reactants adsorb onto the surface and the products desorb from the surface. There's many, many other examples of catalysts too, and I would encourage you to go and read up on the ones that come up in your syllabus. Okay, so that's the end of this episode, this topic. If you want to ask more questions on this, please do so by coming over to our Patreon community at patreon.com slash chemistry made simple. I'll put a link in the episode description as well, so you can find that quite easily. You can also find me on Instagram at chemistry made simple. Thank you for listening to this episode. I hope you found it useful. And if you have had value from it, do consider visiting our Patreon community at patreon.com slash chemistry made simple, where you'll be able to ask deeper questions about this topic and get more support for your studies too. So I look forward to speaking to you again in the next episode. And until then, do look after yourself and goodbye.